Hello, I'm David Shahnazan. I'm head of research at Amar OCI and simultaneously machine learning le lecturer at the Iowa State University. Today, I will talk about large language models, utilizing large language models for biomedical knowledge graph construction, specifically information extraction from EMR nodes. So at first, let's understand what is Amar OCI. At AMRSA, building, we are building a power, powered platform for patient prospecting, for generating real-world insights, cl uh, for clinical trials, and for market expansion in the therapeutic journey. So AMR's AI platform is being utilized in three different ways. First one is we are, by utilizing multimodal data sets, we are providing actionable, actionable insights for from uh, real world data for novel strategies and therapies, which is called Reveal. And the second one is Accelerate. We are accelerating clinical trials by identifying uh, uh, patients for eligible uh, eligible patients for clinical trials, and also we are identifying patients uh, for therapeutics already in the market, which is called expand. So let's try to understand what is the flow uh, of uh, utilizing our SAI platform. So we will go from right to left. So at first, Amaros is being integrated with the, with the clinics. We are integrating all the multimodal, uh, all the different date, patient data from the clinics. Uh, and uh, so we will, uh, to understand the flow, we'll go from left to right now. Uh, at first, CROs and pharma's uh, sponsors are providing eligibility criteria for FDA approved drugs or clinical trials to the clinics. Uh, there are different personas in the clinics uh, working for specifically for different uh, or for diff for specific directions research coordinators administrators providers uh, they are getting that clinical uh, eligibility criteria they are using our platform which is integrated with the clinics data to identify patients for each of these direction so let's try to understand what means real-world data. There are different types of data, claims, EHR, EHR nodes, images, genomics, and all of those are unstructured. What we are doing at AMRSA, at first platform structures all this data. So the main problem, one of the main problems in healthcare that 80% of the healthcare data currently is unstructured. So as I mentioned before, there are different types of data. By applying AI techniques, natural language processing, computer vision, general machine learning te techniques, we can structure this data uh, for research purposes. And by structuring what we mean, we are, uh, uh, we are harmonizing the data from different sources to make it actionable, to, to be able to create, generate insights from this data. So the, uh, at today's talks, talk, we will concentrate on the EHR nodes and we'll talk mainly about natural language processing techniques and the large language models. So on the left, you can see uh, different yeah, nodes uh, created uh, created by the doctors in real world healthcare settings. So as we can see, this is in the unstructured way. Uh, there are a lot of information that can be extracted by from these nodes. Uh, what what actually we are doing? We are extra extracting different medical entities. So, for example, exudative RMD, this is the disease, it's extracted and 
there are different types of medical entities, uh, treatment factors, effects, all those are being extracted from the uh, medical nodes to generate insights by using machine learning techniques, more specifically large language models. So today we will talk uh, specifically about some, uh, uh, our recent paper, recent paper called Large Language Models for Biomedical Knowledge Graph Construction, Information Extraction from EHR not, EMR Nodes. So at first, uh, what the paper is about, we are giving a method to utilize large language models for clinical relation extraction. This is being done in two different phases for various large language model architectures, open book QA and in context learning. We'll not go to the specifics of these techniques. For more information, you can go to the paper. We'll talk about guided prompt design to utilize decoder only large language models for relation extraction. And we'll talk about how to use all these thing, uh, all the extracted relations to construct knowledge graph. So uh, uh, the models being used in the paper, there, uh, there are 12 models we have uh, experimented with to, to the relation extraction from EMR nodes of various architectures. We have used uh, encoder-only, encoder decoder-only, and encoder-decoder architectures of various sizes. You can see here sizes from uh, uh, with different number of parameters from 120 million uh, uh, varying to the, uh, 70 billion no, uh, parameters. Here are the names of the models uh, that has been utilized for the experiments. So there are four different types of medical ent entities that we extracted from the uh, medical nodes. The center is the disease that we extracted all the diseases from the medical nodes. Uh, in addition to that, we extracted all the treats treatments uh, we are defining the treatments the, uh, as methods that slow down the progression, decrease the chance, or reduce the risk of a specific condition, such as uh, for any disease. Factors, those are causes, factors, or risks associated with the disease. And also, we have another term called coexists with. Those are any symptoms, effects, diseases, clinical tests, or behaviors that manifest uh, within the patient while experimenting, uh, while experiencing the disease. So we have designed different questions to design uh, uh, as a backbone for the prompt design to extract the relations from the medical nodes. Here you can see questions designed for each type of medical entity, treatment factor and co coexist with. Uh, for example, for the treatment, uh, we designed the question, what can reduce the risk of place order, which uh, S is a place order for the disease. And uh, uh, Five questions can be revised for the data set uh, in, and in, any, uh, in the future research. So based on those questions, we designed the prompts. Uh, to design the prompt, we, we are uh, following a task agnostic method. What does that mean? Each prompt uh, includes three different components, very important components. And by coloring, we are showing all the different components. By orange, you can see overall task instructions. That's about the broad instructions of the task in the prompt. Red indicates the sentence introduction. 
that's about the type of the text that is going to be used. For example, context, sentence, etc. And purple indicates the retrieval mes message. Retrieval message is about uh, reiterating for uh, in the prompt to give much more uh, uh, detailed information what needs to be done. Here on the top left, you can see uh, simple prompt structure where we have uh, the question, which is in our the, in our method, which is uh, the retrieval message context. Uh, for the contexts, uh, all the clinical nodes are acting as a context to retrieve the message from. And here is the answer of the uh, some uh, large language model for this question in this uh, simple prompt structure. On the bottom uh, left, we can see uh, a bit more complex structure of the prompt where we have also instructions that we are giving as instructions to the larger language models to act as a question answering machine. On the right, you can see our constructed prompt design. So what's the main difference between uh, our uh, constructed prompt design and on, uh, whatever uh, we are showing on the left? That here in the prompt design, we are giving much more information in the uh, overall task instructions and also we are expanding the retrieval message in the retrieval message we are also giving much more important information about uh, relation types and also specifying what is the question and relation type that we are uh, gonna extract from uh, extract from the clinical node and here we can see on the two left on the left that uh, whatever large language models are giving us an output those are not uh, post process post processable because those are not structured outputs for clinical uh, for any relation extraction we need structured outputs uh, on the left we are seeing that the, those are not structured on the right we can see that because of our prompt design, we are getting structured outputs that these uh, values are extractable from the output. For example, macular degeneration and visual loss. We can see that for with uh, age-related macular degeneration, or ARMD, vision loss is uh, some symptom which is coexisting with that disease. So the data, let's, let's talk more on the data. The data is provided from the Macular and Retina Institute. Uh, there are 10,000 patient records uh, with ret of individuals with retinal retina related eye diseases that have been visiting the clinic over the, the last 15 years. More specifically, we have we have had 360,000 clinical nodes relating to 122 unique eye diseases. And uh, we are experimenting uh, we, uh, to construct a, a knowledge graph for age-related macular, de macular degeneration. So out of these 360,000 nodes, we are left with 320 clinical nodes related to AMD, unique nodes. Uh, what we are doing, we have uh, annotated all the data. What does that mean? We extracted all the factors, treatments, and coexist with terms from the all these 320 clinical nodes. 
and after we are evaluating our method of of uh, relation extraction and knowledge graph construction uh, based on precision and recall with the ground truth for comparison being the entity values available in all the nodes here we can see the results for different architectures with different prompting designs uh, uh, let's start with the encoder decoders here we can see that uh, there are different sorry there are different prompt designs that we are experimenting experimenting with the zero shot few shot instruction and guided 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 is the prompt design that we are suggesting for specifically for this task so we can see that encoder decoder uh, models are the best for clinical re uh, relation extraction from emr nodes and the best uh, the best uh, the model with the best performance is uh, flying ul uh, ul2 with guided prompt designs which is ours with our uh, prompt design here are the results we can show we can see but most importantly here we can see that the uh, for decoder only models we have provided only results with our prompting design with our suggested suggested prompting design so what's the thing uh, here that decoder only models uh, haven't provided structured outputs that are processable and we could uh, that uh, we couldn't extract relations out of that nodes with zero shot, few shot, and instruction based uh, prompting designs. And what uh, one of the major accomplishments of the prompting design that we have provided, which is called Guided, that we were able to utilize decoder only models for relation extraction as well. So here you can see that, for example, for treatments uh, and for coexist with terms, those uh, decoder-only models are working pretty good uh, in comparison uh, with other models as well. So let's go forward. Here we can see actual knowledge graph for age-related macular degeneration. Uh, for uh, for the here, uh, the, as, as I mentioned before, the uh, the relations, uh, the terms are treatments, factors, and coexist with. Here are the terms that has been extracted from the 320 nodes, unique nodes, from EHR. Uh, here, under the orange color, you can see the 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 mistakes has been done by the model by mistake for example we can see that by mistake the model uh, uh, extracted glaucoma and diabetes as a factor and risk for age-related macular degeneration but as we have annotated all the clinical nodes uh, we could uh, see that the, those uh, values for those terms are incorrect uh, to summarize the main information that we can take uh, away here uh, from this talk that EHR nodes contains a lot of valuable information and by utilizing large language, language models we can extract uh, very important uh, uh, relations uh, uh, to you to construct knowledge graphs and the most important uh, uh, point here is that we are not uh, highlighting new information but we are uh, these methods are giving us a possibility to highlight existing but overlooked overlooked information which can contribute to some novel discoveries in drug discovery, in clinical trials, and so on. So, yeah, please let me know if you have 
any questions on the talk. Thank you.